we all rely on the internet for everything from watching videos to getting work done but what happens when websites load slowly it's irritating right this is where content delivery networks come into play in this video let's explore what cdns are why they are needed and how they work along with real world examples and optimization strategies Hi there, welcome to Tech and Career Bites. I'm a software professional with over two decades of experience, including seven years in leadership roles at a global product-based organization. A content delivery network or CDN is a network of servers spread across different locations. A CDN is designed to deliver the web content faster and more reliably to users. It does this by storing content at servers near to users, which helps reduce delays and makes a website load faster. CDNs are needed to address the most common and must to address the challenges of distributed systems. Let's discuss what those challenges are and how CDN helps. By serving content, from servers closer to users, CDNs minimize the time it takes for data to travel, resulting in latency reduction, faster load times, and improved user experience. CDNs can handle high traffic loads and sudden spikes in demand by distributing content across multiple servers. This prevents website crashes and downtime and helps websites scale. CDNs improve the reliability of a content delivery by reducing the risk of server failures and network congestion. They also provide a redundancy and failover mechanisms to ensure continuous availability. There are a few common terminologies used while discussing CDN. Let's familiarize ourselves with them before diving deeper. A point of presence or POP is a network location where CDN infrastructure is placed to cache and deliver content. For example, Netflix data center located in New York City is a POP among several of its POPs. An edge server is a server at the edge of a CDN network, caching and serving content to users. Edge servers are located at POP. A proxy server is an intermediary server in a CDN that caches and delivers content to users, reducing load on origin servers and improving performance. Proxy servers are also located at POP. Now it's time to go deeper and understand the inner workings of a CDN. A CDN comprises of several components that work together to efficiently deliver the content. Let's first understand the components and then we can see the entire workflow. Client is the end user device like a laptop or a smartphone that requests a content from the CDN. Routing system determines the optimal path for content delivery based on factors like network proximity and server availability. Scrubber servers filter out malicious traffic and protect against a cyber threat like a DDoS attacks. Proxy servers cache and serve content to users, reducing the load on origin servers and improving performance. Distribution system manages the distribution of content to edge servers and ensures consistent delivery across the network. Origin servers store the original copy of content and provide it to the CDN for caching and distribution. Load balancers are the components that distribute incoming traffic across multiple servers at various levels to optimize performance and ensure high availability. Content optimization tools improve performance and save bandwidth by preparing and refining content before it is cached and delivered. This includes actions like compressing images, combining files, and minimizing HTML, CSS, JavaScript. For instance, 
minification teams are necessary parts like spaces and comments from HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files. Logging and monitoring tools track CDN performance metrics, monitor server health, and provide insights into traffic patterns and usage trends. Management system controls and monitors the operation of the CDN, including configuration, performance monitoring, and analytics. Consider a scenario where a user in India wants to access a popular video streaming website hosted on servers in the USA. Without a CDN, the user's request would need to travel long distances, resulting in slow load times and buffering issues. But with a CDN in place, the workflow is optimized to deliver content efficiently and reliably, leveraging various components of the CDN architecture. Let's see the entire workflow and the role each component plays. Step 1. The end user device in India sends a request to access the video streaming website. Step 2. The request is routed to the nearest point of presence or edge server in India using load balancer to distribute traffic and optimize content delivery. Step 3. The proxy server in the Indian POP checks if the requested video content is available in its cache. Step 4. If the content is available, it is served directly to the user, enhancing performance and reducing bandwidth usage. Otherwise, the request proceeds to the next step. Step 5. The proxy server fetches the requested video content from the origin server in the United States. Step 6. Load balancers are utilized to distribute incoming requests among multiple origin servers, optimizing resource utilization and ensuring scalability. Step 7. The fetched content is then distributed to the proxy server in India, as well as to other edge servers or POPs worldwide. Step 8. The content is cached at the proxy server in India for future requests, employing caching strategies. Step 9. The CDN continuously monitors the health and reliability of a proxy servers and origin servers, ensuring efficient content delivery and fault tolerance. Step 10. The CDN management system controls and monitors the operation of the CDN, including configuration, performance monitoring, and analytics to ensure optimal CDN performance and user experience. How does the content get loaded to CDN servers from the origin servers? CDN employs various caching strategies to store the content in edge and proxy servers. In push caching strategy, origin servers proactively push content to edge servers before it is requested, ensuring faster delivery to users. And in pull caching strategy, edge servers fetch content from origin servers in real time when requested by users. This reduces storage requirements and ensures freshness of content. The push caching strategy is typically used for static content and the pull caching strategy is used for dynamic content. To know more about various caching strategies, you can watch our video. The link is available in the description box. So we saw earlier that the routing system routes the request to the nearest pop. But how does it do that? As the request for content comes in, finding the nearest server or edge server to fetch data involves determining the server that is closest to the requesting client to minimize latency and optimize performance. Two critical factors influence the proximity of server. The two critical factors are network distance and request load. Network distance is the distance between the user and the proxy server. It depends on two main factors. First, length of the network path. The physical distance between the user and the proxy server determines the network path's length. Shorter paths typically result in lower latency. And second, capacity limits. The capacity or bandwidth along the network path also impacts proximity. 
optimal proximity involves selecting the server with the shortest path and the highest available bandwidth. This ensures faster content delivery to the user. Request load is the load on a proxy server at any given time. If a group of a proxy servers is experiencing high loads, the request routing system should redirect a request to servers with lower loads. This action helps to balance the load across proxy servers and reduces response latency for users. CDNs use various routing techniques to route user requests to the nearest proxy server. Let's discuss a few of them. DNS-based redirection involves mapping domain names to IP addresses of a proxy servers located nearest to the client. When a client sends a DNS query to resolve a domain name, the DNS server responds with the IP address of the nearest proxy server, directing the client to that server for content retrieval. Anycast routing is a network addressing and routing technique that directs data packets to the nearest or best performing node among a group of servers that share the same IP address. With Anycast, multiple proxy servers advertise the same IP address and routers automatically route traffic to the nearest server based on network topology, minimizing latency and improving reliability. Client multiplexing involves maintaining multiple concurrent connections between the client and different proxy servers. This allows the client to connect to multiple servers simultaneously and choose the one with the lowest latency for content retrieval. HTTP-based redirection involves the proxy server redirecting the client to a closer server using HTTP status codes such as 301 for mood permanently or 302 for found. When the client sends a request to the proxy server, the server evaluates the client's location and redirects the request to the nearest server for data retrieval. Positioning CDN servers strategically is crucial for efficient content delivery. The CDN server placement can be on-premise or off-premise. On-premise's placement involves setting up CDN proxy servers in smaller data centers located near major internet exchange points. These data centers benefit from direct peering with numerous networks, ensuring optimal connectivity and faster content delivery. Off-premise's, on the other hand, involves placing CDN proxy servers within internet service providers networks. By leveraging ISP infrastructure, CDN providers can distribute proxy servers across diverse geographical locations, reducing latency and improving content delivery speed for end users. Akamai and Netflix popularized the idea of keeping their CDN proxy servers inside the client's ISPs. What benefits could an ISP get by placing the CDN proxy servers inside their network? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Most companies don't build their own CDN. Instead, they use the services of a CDN provider, such as Akamai, Cloudflare, Fastly, and so on, to deliver their content. In a content delivery network, distributing the content to a large number of edge and proxy servers simultaneously while minimizing the burden on origin servers is a critical challenge. To address this challenge, CDNs implement a tree-like structure to facilitate efficient data distribution from the origin server to the CDN servers. In this tree-like structure, the CDN proxy servers are organized into a hierarchy resembling a tree with edge proxy servers at the bottom and parent proxy servers above them. The edge proxy servers which are closest to the end users have peer servers within the same hierarchy. These peer servers receive the data from parent nodes in the tree which in turn receive data from the origin servers. 
the data distribution process involves copying content from the origin server to the proxy servers by traversing the different paths within the tree structure. Each level of the hierarchy plays a role in propagating content downstream to the edge servers, ensuring efficient delivery to end users. If a child or parent proxy server fails within a POP, the system is designed to handle such situations efficiently. Let's discuss them. In case a child proxy server experiences a failure, DNS can redirect a client request to another functioning child level proxy server within the same POP. Each child proxy server is aware of multiple upper layer parent servers. Therefore, if one parent server fails, the child proxy server can route a request to the alternative parent server, ensuring continuous service availability. Similarly, if a parent proxy server fails, child proxy servers can switch to alternate parent servers to maintain service continuity. This ensures that even if one level of a proxy servers encounters an issue, the system can seamlessly route a traffic through backup servers. The origin server stores the original content. In case of a origin server failure, the other origin servers within the CDN infrastructure take on the additional load. The content is typically replicated across multiple origin servers, ensuring redundancy and fault tolerance. CDNs use mechanisms like cache invalidation and time to live settings to ensure data consistency between origin servers and edge caches. To learn more, watch our video on distributed caching, linked in the description box. In conclusion, content delivery networks play a vital role in optimizing the delivery of web content to users worldwide. By leveraging a distributed network of edge servers, CDNs reduce latency, improve reliability, and enhance overall user experience. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more interesting tech topics. Also, do check out our other videos on software performance optimization case studies, system design, coding, big data, and career growth. My name is Rupa, and I thank you so much for watching this video. See you next time.